Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we'll be talking about the spell Imprisonment. Ah! Uh, this is a this is a ninth level spell, correct? That it is. This is a this is a big one. This is, is a warlock wizard biggin. Is it worth it? No. No. I don't think so because all right here's what i'm thinking mm-hmm. ninth level spell and you there's so many other options to just kill the thing what what is what is imprisonment giving you here so the the fantasy of imprisonment is yes. definitely the fantasy of like classic greek tragedies or really big like uh, epic tales of some evil monster or hero getting stuck in the stars or being thrown into the sun or turning indefinitely to stone would be something that was in this, but we have petrification and lower levels here, so it doesn't really necessarily fit the bill. But the gist of it is, this is some epic eternal punishment that you deliver onto gods, that you deliver onto men, that you All deliver right. onto creatures where they're just stuck forever in purgatory. That's oh, the the Sis- Sisyphus pushing the rocks up the hill. Yeah, all right. Right. Now, the reason that I say this spell is bad is that it has a minute cast time. Um, and that is rough. You don't want to... You can't spend a minute if you're fighting something trying to imprisonment. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to have 10 rounds to stick it in an indefinite hole. Um, especially when you have to be within 30 feet of it. So, like, doing this discreetly is even quite difficult it ends up just being this i look at imprisonment as something that starts or ends a dungeons and dragons game this is either something where the party accidentally lets something really powerful out and then that entity torments them or the party finally re-imprisons or imprisons something in uh, an imprisonment and that's how a campaign ends that's sort of where i see the spell existing as and that isn't really a spell that's more of a plot device Mm. uh so a plot device for a ninth level spell slot i don't want that that doesn't seem like it belongs in any character sheets it does seem like it could be cool for uh like a DM tool where it 100%. Looks... All right, it's a it's a minute cast time. Somebody's trying to imprison you and you've got 10 rounds to make that not happen. Yeah. It's a very clear deadline. That's a really good uh like you're fighting like let's say even the entity you're fighting is invincible, right? getting 10 minutes to figure out how to, or a minute to make them figure out how they're not how to make them either not invincible and kill them or otherwise disrupt the cast is just a fun little encounter on its own this is something that you do with oh god the the arch demon and demon asmodeus is going to finally imprison the god of light and uh epic battle and we have to stop him from doing so that's a cool encounter concept now what we haven't covered yet is what does the spell do <laughs> sure <laughs> So like I said prior, um, you have to do it. You ca- It takes a minute to cast. It lasts until dispelled, which that's not true. Um, well, okay, that's that's about as true as it possibly can be is when it comes to these spells. Whenever I think of until dispelled, normally I think that means indefinite, but it, this is definitely not indefinite for some reasons we'll get into. Um, it casts a time of a minute, and range of 30 feet means you need time, and you need the thing to not be actively trying to kill you if you want to imprison something. So what that then happens if you do get, get the full minute off is you create a magical restraint to hold a creature, um, it makes a wisdom saving throw. If it succeeds, it is immune to this spell. It is no longer going to be affected by it. It is forever and always for the rest of time cannot be imprisoned. So if you're like, man, I really hate that banker. I'm going to imprison that. Remember that banker in level one that wouldn't give us the loan to buy our cool <laughs> keep. I'm going to go imprison him indefinitely. You can, if he rolls a 20 on his save, you have now cast a ninth level spell to try to imprison somebody into a uh, a prison for all of time. Uh, and they are not going there. And and you can't try again? Never again. It's huh. immune to the spell. Um, now, well, while... Does that mean somebody else can't also try again? It is immune to this spell if you cast it again. All so right. yes, conceivably someone else could try to imprison them. While affected by the spell, the creature doesn't need to breathe, eat, drink, doesn't age. This is the eternal punishment element of it. Uh, additionally, it can't be located by divination magic. So again, the idea is this is imprisoning it something indefinitely. Whenever you cast it, you choose the form of imprisonment, and these are all very biblical. These are all the the big 
chained to the rocks by gods. This is these are the varying modes. So you have burial, which is you put the part target underground uh, in a sphere of magical force just large enough to contain it. Nothing can come in or out of the sphere. Nothing can teleport in or out of the sphere. You can't planarly travel in and out of the sphere. It's just there forever. Um, they require the, all of these have a little material component that you need to include whenever you're casting them. This one is a small little mithril orb. Then we have chaining, which this is literally chained to the rocks. This is giant heavy chains firmly root something in place and it restrains it indefinitely. Um, Fun fact, being restrained does not mean you can't take other actions. So uh, that's t this is definitely the worst punishment because anything that can cast spells or whatever can just yell obscenities at you until everyone around them dies. Like, they can just remove the rocks. I, I don't know. This one seems not very, like, fixed, but that's fine. It, it's, again, this is we're talking about uh, plot devices, not necessarily practicality here. Mm. Um, then we have the hedged prison, which is uh, if players get, or the, the target gets teleported to a demiplane, um, which is just like a labyrinth or a tower or a cage. This is literally the princess trap in the tower. This is literally the labyrinth of the Minotaur. This is that's what that is. Um, then we have minimus containment. Um, the target shrinks to be itty bitty, and you stick them inside a gemstone, and then they're just stuck in the gemstone forever. That's nifty. Um, and then we have slumber, which the target is literally snow, snow white, cannot be awoken. Now that's a lot of stuff, but all of it's basically doing the same thing, which is somebody isn't do moving for a very long time. Um, but we now have the final element of the spell because this spell just keeps going. Uh, ending the spell. So whenever you're casting it, in any of its versions, you specify the condition that will cause the spell to end and release the target. I'm sorry, you can specify it. Rules is written. You don't have to specify a way the spell ends, which then can be ruled as the spell has no definitive end, except a dispel a dispel magic spell can end at cast of science level. That's something that is just after all this text. A level nine dispel magic will always end in imprisonment, which is really fucking lame, honestly. Like. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, gotta give them some chance. If you die, you, know. you can't die when you're in this. Well, you can't die natural causes no. when you're in this. I'm sorry. But... I'm saying if the caster dies and doesn't have any, uh, leave any contingencies for the spell to end, you know, there's gotta be some chance for the poor bastard. <laughs> Oh, see, I kind—I think for a ninth level spell that takes a minute to cast and has all these constraints around it already, eh, it doesn't need to. This can just be locked away forever. I think that's fine. Honestly, this is like a permanent death. Because D&D, it's really hard to die forever. As we've already discussed in every one of our resurrection videos, it's really easy to come back to life. Um, I think this could have been fine just to be like, no, this is a permanent way someone is dead. But it, I get it. I can understand your perspective. Um, that's reasonable, I think. Uh, in any case, as for the conditions... Um, the condition you specify can be as elaborate as you'd like. The DM does have to get to agree if it's reasonable. If it's unreasonable, the DM can say, no, try again. Which, if you do rules as written, would then say, well, I'm just going to not give it a condition. Um, this makes the, a lot of people think that rules is intended. The DM will come up with a condition if you don't have one, or there should always be an end condition for these kinds of effects. And this can be like, all of a sudden, the spell, like, if you just pick a random... Uh, combination of 3,000 uh, words that have to be spoken in order and you forget them, that may be seen as unreasonable to some, but it's just a string of words to someone else. So, like, is that reasonable? I don't know. You have to work on that with your DM and that's complicated and messy. Um, the conditions can be based, it says, like, they can be based on things about them, um, but they cannot be, like, qualities that are intangible, like game elements, like class, level, hit points, mm -hmm. game object stuff. I don't know. That all seems a little bit superfluous. Um, now, there's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I haven't mentioned it yet because I like to gripe about gold costs. Um, <laughs> this costs 500 gold point per hit dice of the target. Per hit die, I'm sorry, of the target. Um, which, if we're gonna let's, Bob, what's a big bad you would want to imprison? Give me a monster of a relatively high CR. Uh, I don't know the dragon that ate my mother. All right, let's do ancient red dragon, shall we? Uh. If you had to guess how much gold it would cost to stick an ancient red dragon in this thing, where would your starting ballpark be at 500 gold per hit dice? All right. Um, I guess 20 hit dice, so like 10,000 gold. Is, is my uh, math right? 28 for 14K is where we're closer to. <laughs> 14,000 right. gold for 28 hit die monster. Your math was right, though. You, you nailed the, the 20 is one, uh, 10K. Okay. We were spot on there. Um, yeah, but this thing's got 28 hit dice, so we're looking oh. at 14,000 gold. Um, and fun fact, if it passes it, those gold components are still lost to time. <laughs> you just spent 14 grand for something to pass a wisdom saving throw. Um, not, nope, that isn't ideal. Uh, yeah. I, 
I spent a lot of time explaining what the spell actually does, only for it to, like, universally just be a, you stick something in a place it doesn't want to be for a very long time. And it probably isn't going to get out, unless outrageously powerful entities want it to. And that... Eh... I don't. Well, I mean, this is, I can't this think is of... a flavor spell. You you really yeah. have to personally hate a creature to you know do this rather than just do something a lot easier and kill it. Absolutely, this is, feels like something like you want to facilitate the Greek god fantasy. You want to have your warlocks high level fantasy be the that you become the devil, right? As opposed to you worshiping the devil for so long, mm. you finally usurp them, and now you are the one making the deals and stick making people roll the boulder up the hill. Even still, I would say that's something you would want to do mechanically. I wouldn't put this on my spell sheet if I had fights to go into still, because there are way more powerful ninth level spells that will definitely make fights easier, and this doesn't make fights easier. Um, no. This spell's neat. It's very fun flavorfully. It isn't good, though. Um, I would go as far to say the spell is near uncastable. Again, unless your DM's like, specifically, you need this spell for this campaign to end so you can put the thing back in the stars where it belongs. Um, that's like, that's the actual use case of this, and there isn't really one outside of that. Again, outside of spite. If you're really spiteful against the, against the marquee tender that kicked you guys out in the first half of the night, sure, imprison them, I guess. All right, you got a score? Um, I'm going to... I'm really going to give this spell a one. I don't think anyone should ever cast no, this. I, I understand where you come from. I'm going to give it a two because I am really spiteful. There. But I probably would never put this on the character sheet. Exactly. All right. Well, that was imprisonment. The, oh, you know what? We never talked about... Uh, the, like There are similar spells. Like, uh, mm -hmm. what is it like? Magic jar or something? Does that do a similar thing, or is that? Uh, is I that think totally magic jar different? is yourself. I'll double check. I I think I've read magic jar exactly twice in my life. So yeah, uh, it's a weird necromancy spell. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, it, you're the one that does the whole oh. like you trap your soul in a body or the oh, jar you, thing. It's yourself. Okay. Yeah, it's like a like clone is similar to like it backs yourself up. Those are the different kinds of effects. As far as imprisonment goes, there's like maze. It's kind of close. Oh, there's but... maze. And there's a uh, what's that other one? Um, was it force cage? No, that's just a, that's just an actual cage, right? I mean, that's similar enough to imprisonment. But mm. the, go for it. No, no, that that was it, just eh. yeah. Not they're really. all the big difference is all those just take an action to cast. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, this like is the actual uh, restraints uh, when you care no, about no, it. All right. Uh, Imprisonment is nigh eternal punishment. Yeah. There aren't really any other spells that do that. So that yeah. is something neat about it. Ooh, I'm tempted to bump this up to three. That seems ambitious. No, nah, I'm going to do it. Cause, uh, All right, do it, Bob. It, you know, for, for the flavor. It's very flavorful. I'll give you that. Yeah. This is a flavor win 100%. Yeah, if, Even if like you really, I mean, and, and and if you're playing the game right, and if you if your dungeon master's doing his job, then you're gonna hate this this creature so much that death is too good for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, feeble mind. Fe okay, yeah, feeble mind somewhat similar. Go. Feeble mind is also way better than this, but also <laughs> probably more miserable because it's lower level. <laughs> But yeah, right. Feeble Mind is definitely a face worse than death. Feeble Mind actually, yeah. If you really hate somebody, just Feeble Mind them. That's definitely better than this, especially because you can do it over and over again if you fail the first time. <laughs> all right. I, I I feel better about having gotten all that out. Great success. All right. Giving it a three. Still giving uh, it a one. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I totally understand. <laughs> All right, that was Imprisonment. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, or you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.